responsible, as many of you long timers in the room know, for really expanding us through the school system and bringing us to the point where we are today. You left at one point, we called you back, <laughs> you know, we've never let you go. You have retired, but you're always a part of Women of Tomorrow. She still volunteers every year for the gala, both Pam and her husband. So we're so happy to have you. Thank you for all these years. And Bianca Erickson, who for more than 11 years was our director, was our, our VP, was our C COO, was, was everything to Women of Tomorrow, who also came in many, many years ago and helped expand us through the school system and really get us to where we are today. So, so happy to have everyone here to celebrate our 20 years. So, Don, why don't you come on over here? And I just, uh, I don't want to pontificate too much, but I have to say that it was 20 years ago that I was sitting in Don's office talking about this crazy idea about getting a bunch of professional women together to help uplift the lives of young women in our public schools. And for all my dreams and thoughts, this would never have happened if you hadn't thrown the weight of the television station behind it, if you yourself had not been a mentor to so many people who are big stars on television today who really owe their careers to you. So what do you remember of that time and what are your thoughts? You know, in life, uh, there are moments you never forget. So I was sitting in my office, and um, actually, a uh, Women of Tomorrow alum said, Jennifer Balapi wants to see you. And when your number one anchor wants to see you, you, you're, you, you focus, <laughs> particularly when Jennifer wants to see you. So Jennifer came in, and I was on my toes, and uh, Jennifer came in, and she said, I have a dream I want to share with you. She said, I have a dream to create a program to mentor young women at risk in high schools, to mentor them and to ignite their dreams and their aspiration, to change their lives for the better. And this is how I want to do it. I want to match them with other professional women. Now, Jennifer was unique in the television news business because in her career, unlike a lot of other people, when she got her success, she helped other people. So mentoring was something that she and I shared as a passion. And she and I threw our body and soul behind this program. Now, I was known, well known as being a maverick, so I used a lot more resources at NBC than NBC thought I was using. <laughs> the key to this was we were all dreamers. Kathy Fernandez-Rundle came in, my wife Maria, these are unbelievable people that believe that they can make the possible, the impossible possible. So we started going and we started rallying these resources and we started recruiting incredibly talented, strong women mentors. We didn't know how it was going and we had to have a, a gala which was important to finance this. And Maria, they said it couldn't be done but she grabbed it by the throat she threw up a tent, and we had our first gala. We had a thunderstorm coming through, but we all had a great time, and, and uh, it was memorable. I want to share a couple of things. So we didn't know how it was going, and I was uh, a principal for the day at Braddock High School, and I took it very seriously. I was there all day. There are thousands of students that go there. And at the end, I was standing with the principal as we were saying goodbye and I was watching this chaos and I saw out of the corner of my eye a young woman tentatively approaching the principal and I was fascinated by it. And just as she was about to speak to the principal, she spoke to me. She said, Mr. Brown, she said, I want to thank you, not for being principal of the day, but for Women of Tomorrow. Because if it wasn't for that, I would never have had the courage to come up to you and speak to you and tell you it has changed my life. That's when I knew that we were doing something that was extraordinary, that we were doing something that was literally changing people's lives. And the last thing I want to say is there's a moment that is incredibly special within this program, and that is the graduation day, where through the tears of joy, you see right before your eyes 
the manifestation of all the work that the mentors and the educators have done to transform these girls. Because it's that moment through their tears of joy that you see you have changed a life. One by one, a hundred at a time, thousands at a time. And I always say, in order to understand where you're going, it's very important to understand where you have been. For the last 20 years, it's extraordinary where we have been. For the next 20 years, it's going to be an extraordinary journey. And we are going to mentor these young women. We're going to ignite their dreams and their aspiration. And we're going to change their lives. And it all began with that idea. And here we are today. So I can't tell you how much I appreciate being here on this journey together. Thank you. So just a couple of quick things. You talk about how we started our first gala in a thunderstorm, but we were also under an anthrax threat, yes. if you remember, okay? Those were the days Tom Brokaw had anthrax mailed to, the, to NBC in New York, and we also had a couple of weird things with some powder in them. We didn't know what was going on in, in those days. So there was a lot of stuff going on. And Maria Brown came to me and said, um, you know, I think you should really talk to this young woman who's a really talented producer at NBC6. And, you know, her name is Marissa Tossin, and I think she could actually really help with the gala. So, <laughs> so now all these years later, our philanthropic chair, Marissa Tossin, who... The two of you have meant so much to this program in, in so many ways, and it, more ways than, than we can count. Uh, you'll notice that Don and I are both wearing these little red rosettes, and we are starting a new tradition at Women of Tomorrow as of tonight, and we're going to be honoring everyone for every five years they spend in the program. And we have so many people who have been here for so long, and we'll be giving you the rosettes tonight, which we hope you will wear to all Women of Tomorrow events. So if you can come up when we call your name, and I just want to say one thing. 20 years ago, we did not have really good computer systems. I'm not even sure we did anything on computer at Women of Tomorrow 20 years ago, okay? So there are possibilities that there are some errors. And if there are errors, just tell us and we will make it right, okay? Because I'm not sure that everybody's, uh, everybody's list is in here properly. Melinda Sinrich, please. Belinda Gonzalez Leon. Randy Shankman. Oh, Randy Shankman. Where is Randy? Ah, oh, we go. Congrats. Dora Sutton. Dora Sutton. Karen Times. Deborah Leibowitz. Are you here? No, Deborah didn't make it tonight. Okay. Uh, Catherine, Catherine Davis. Okay, we got people. Angela Kelsey. Yes. Ah. Judy Warner. Go ahead. Judy Warner. And I just want to say, I know that you've all already seen him and a lot of people have been speaking to him, but much of what we have been able to accomplish over the years uh, is because of our partnership with the Miami-Dade school system. Pam was the first person that uh, really came on and, and advocated for us. And I have to tell you that Superintendent Carvalho has been so instrumental in the continued success of this program. His accomplishments are uh, pretty legendary in the education world and, and industry. He's been named National Superintendent of the Year, National Superintendent of the Year. He's also been named one of the fantastic five educators in the country for making a difference in America. So that's really pretty amazing. His, you know, accomplishments go on and on, but during his tenure, this school district became one of the nation's highest performing school districts, which is really quite amazing. And we like to think at Women of Tomorrow that we had something to do with that. <laughs> so.
So we love to have you here. Superintendent Carvalho, would you please come up and say a few words?